All right, so this is chapter nine, section three, called Rotations, our learning objective, which I ask all students to put on their notes um, to make sure you know what you're supposed to learn. So out of this section, we're supposed to learn how to draw and identify rotation images of figures. All right, so let's look at our important information. Um, so a rotation of X about point Q is called, where Q is called the center of rotation, is a transformation with two properties. The image of Q is itself, Q prime is equal to Q, so you're not changing dimensions or anything else. And then for every other point V, Q V prime is equal to Q V, and the measure of the angle is equal to the original angle. So what I want to show is that we rotate clock, uh, counterclockwise. So if you look, it doesn't, you can see X is doing that. See, the little arrow shows counterclockwise. But there's nothing anywhere else that says, yes, counterclockwise. So if you guys can make note that we're going to rotate counterclockwise unless otherwise instructed. The positive number of degrees um, a figure rotates is the angle of rotation. And we did rigid motion yesterday. It just means that all of our dimensions and angles stay the same. All right, so let's look at our problem now that we have all that beautiful information. Um, this is just a random box. So, so the image of point B is itself. So we're rotating about B. So B gets to stay the same. So B and B prime are going to be equal to each other. The image of triangle LOB is triangle L prime, O prime, and B stays the same because it's itself. So B doesn't have a prime on it. So we are going to rotate triangle LOB 50 degrees around point B. I'll begin by drawing the side oops, BL prime. Then I will draw BO prime. And here's a question that I have for you guys. Does it matter if I draw BO first or BL first, and what would the difference between the two be? All right, so we're going to circle the tools we will need to draw this triangle. Now, will we need a ruler? Not really. Not if we have a compass. Because what do we use the compass for? We use it to draw circles, but we did a whole... What was it, chapter six? I wasn't here for chapter six. Chapter six, we um, transferred line segments. We did angles. So a compass is good for line segments and ang ang uh, angles. And then with a protractor, we got our straight edge. So really, we only need a compass and a protractor to draw this. And the protractor is to measure that 50 degree angle. All right, to draw a triangle L prime, O prime, B, I will rotate the pre-image clockwise. So what did we say is the rotation? Rotation is counterclockwise unless otherwise constructed. So this is false because we go counterclockwise. The sides of the image must be congruent to the sides of the pre-image. Yes, we have to have the same side lengths, the same angle measures. I need to use the compass and protractor to draw only two sides of the image. That's true because how does that third side come about? If you already have the two sides, all you got to do is connect the endpoints, and that, there's your third side. Each angle in triangle L prime O prime B is 50 degrees greater 
That is false because all the angles need to have the same measure as the original one. All right, so with our highlighters out, we um, there is actually a rule for rotation of 90, 180, and 270 about the origin. So when you have a 90 degree rotation about the origin, you take the x and the y coordinates and you switch them, and then you put a negative sign on the first coordinate. So 90 degree rotation about the origin, switch the x and the y, put a negative on that first coordinate. For a 180 degree rotation about the origin, you just put a negative sign on all of your coordinates, your x and your y. A rotation of 270 degrees about the origin, you switch the x and the y, but this time the x gets the negative, the, the second coordinate gets the negative sign. Or you can think of it, if you're already negative, you just change the sign and you make it positive. And then to rotate 360 degrees, nothing changes because you've got it in one complete circle. X and y, x. All right, so we are going to rotate FGHI 270 degrees about the origin. The little R, this is terminology, things little R means rotate. So we're going to circle the correct order pair we use to find. Now if we don't do XY, it's not negative YX. It's not negative x, negative y, but it is y, negative x. So we're going to use that rule on our, um, each of our points, our coordinates, to find the new coordinate, the image of it. So if I'm at negative 3, 2, I switch the negative 3 and the 2, and I make the second one negative. So I switch the negative 3 and the 2 and go to negative 3, and then I change the sign of the second one. For point G, I take my original coordinate, negative 3, negative 1, and I switch the 2, and I change the sign of the second one. So then it's negative 1, positive 3. Same for H, negative 1, negative 1. Then I change the sign of the second one. And then I is 0, 1. I flip those. And you can't make 0 negative, so he doesn't get them. So if I graph that, two hundred and seventy degrees takes it three fourths of the way around the circle. All right, let's do another practice problem. The same information. In the diagram, W, X, Y, Z is a parallelogram, given that information. T is the midpoint of the diagonals. Can you use the properties of rhotations to prove that W, X, Y, Z is a rhombus? And explain. So 9 says a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. To prove WXYZ is a rhombus, I need to show that WX is equal to XY is equal to YZ is equal to ZW. So all sides are congruent. Since the lengths of WX, XY, YZ and ZW are unknown, you cannot use a rotation to prove that it is a rhombus. Rotations don't give you any information about the side lengths, so we 